everyone. Today, I'm going to continue uh, discussing um, special parallelograms. So let's get started. Um, let's start with a warm up, um, finding the values of X and Y. So with this problem right here, we know that if this is a parallelogram, because it does have both pairs of opposite sides parallel, um, the diagonals bisect each other. So that means that y, this is going to equal this, and this segment here will equal this segment here. So y is going to equal 2x. We also know that y plus x is equal to 6. So what we can do to solve this is I have two equations and two unknowns is I can plug what y equals into the second equation. So I have 2x plus x is equal to 6. I have 3x equals 6 and x equals 2. So we have x and in order to find y, we plug that back into that equation in the beginning or the second one, either one is fine. So we have y is equal to 2 times 2. So y is equal to 4. For this problem right here, um, two things are happening. We do know that this line right here is parallel to this line here. And we also know that this point and this point are midpoints. So therefore, um, this is equal to this. So we can say 3y minus 8 equals 2y plus 2. You distribute. Um, subtract 2y, we get y equals 10. So we have this equation, the y equals 10, um, so that's solved. For this problem here, um, you have a choice because this is a mid-segment right here, and you can either say two of these is equal to one, because remember the mid-segment, this formula says that's x, that's 2x, and this is a mid-segment if it connects both midpoints um, and, of course, is parallel to that base right there. Um, what ends up happening here is I can say that this value, two of these, make one of these. So I can either say two of x squared minus five is equal to one, two minus two x, or I can say one of these is equal to half of these. So that, and that's your choice. You do that how you like. Either way, we're going to get the same answer. We're going to divide by two here. So that ends up becoming the half one. Divide by 2, I get 1 minus x. Um, I am going to um, subtract both of these values because I do recognize that this is quadratic. And whenever you do have a quadratic equation, you do need to set it equal to 0. So we're going to add x, and then we're going to subtract 1. So I get minus 6 equals 0. I am going to factor, and when I factor, I get x here, x here. Um, one's plus, one's minus, what multiplies to be negative six, but adds up to be one, um, and that's going to be a positive three and a negative two. We split these up, I get x equals two, and I get x equals negative three. Now, I do want to recommend always to check your answers, because even though you know that a negative number, you cannot have a negative length. But this being an answer, you can have a negative answer um, as long as that negative answer doesn't give you a negative length. So let's plug these in and check. Um, if I had negative 3 as one of my answers, okay, I'm going to erase this so I can see these numbers better. Um, if I plug in negative 3, that's going to be negative 3 squared minus 5. Well, that's 9 minus 5, which is 4. That means if that's 4, this must be 8. Let's check. 2 minus 2 times negative 3. Um, that's 2 plus 6, which is 8. So actually, even though it's a negative answer, it doesn't give me a negative length. So definitely check your answers. Now let's try 2. Um, 2 squared minus 5. Well, that's 4 minus 5. 4 minus 5 is a negative number. Um, I can't have a negative length. So that's out. OK? Um, Another problem uh, with warming up here, uh, given the figure, we know that the measure of angle F, here's F, and the measure of angle G are equal. We also know that the measure of angle F is equal to the measure of angle FHI. Um, prove, prove it. Prove it's a parallelogram. So we're going to start off with a proof 
and let's see where we go. So we have our statements and you're always gonna write your statements and your reasons, okay? And we're given, what we are given is that the measure of angle F is equal to the measure of angle G. We also have the measure of angle F is equal to the measure of angle FHI. And this is given. So number two, um, the next thing we're gonna say is that, let's see, this is equal to this. Well, those are alternate interior angles if they're congruent. Um, so what we do know is, meaning if we were to extend that, right, this would become my transversal. This makes this parallel to this. So given that these two um, angles are congruent, that means that um, this line is parallel to this line. So I can say that EF, line segment EF is congruent to, or excuse me, not congruent, but parallel, um, parallel to GI, or excuse me, GH in this case. And the reason is, is because the converse of um, the alternate interior angles theorem, because um, if parallel lines form uh, congruent alternate interior angles, then you can say congruent alternate interior angles uh, form parallel lines. And what that is, is the converse to that, to that theorem. Um, so now we know those are parallel. Um, thirdly, we know that um, if F is congruent to I and, or excuse me, F is congruent to FHI and F is also congruent to G, um, that would make this line parallel to this line. So what I do need to say is that G is, parallel, or G is congruent to FHI. And so I can actually say that um, the measure of angle G is equal to the measure of angle FHI. And the reason, see how these two are, are equal? these two are equal. Um, you also can say that there's a transitive property, F equals G, um, G or F equals FHI, therefore G equals FHI. So I would accept either substitution, property of equality, um, or I would um, accept the transitive property of equality, okay? Um, so now because those two are equal, um, we would then say, that EG, line segment EG, is parallel to line segment FH, and that would be the converse. This one also was the converse. Um, same thing with this. This is a converse of the corresponding angle theorem, um, which originally the th or theorem was if you have parallel lines cut by a transversal, parallel lines um, form congruent corresponding angles. So the converse of that theorem states that um, corresponding angles, I would say congruent corresponding um, angles form parallel lines. And that's the converse. Um, number five, if this is parallel to this, and this side is parallel to that side, then I can say that EFHG is a parallelogram, and the reason is the definition of a parallelogram, uh, which states that if both pairs of opposite sides are, are parallel, then the uh, quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Done, yay. All right, so um, we have some characteristics of a parallelogram that we went over at the last um, class. And so I just want to talk about those. Um, the first one was um, that the definition of, the, of a parallelogram, which basically said that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Um, number two, we could say both pairs of opposite sides 
are congruent. So again, if you have a parallelogram, if it is a parallelogram, a parallelogram, then both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, okay? In addition to that, both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. That side's congruent to that. You could go like five centimeters, five centimeters, 10 centimeters, 10 centimeters. You could show it like that. In addition to that, um, we have both pairs of opposite angles um, are congruent. And what that means is that this angle here is congruent to this angle here. And this angle is congruent to this angle. So those are opposite angles, and both pairs have to be congruent. Um, then we have both pairs of opposite angles have to be congruent. Um, we would say that both of my diagonals bisect each other. So that means that if I have a parallelogram, that my diagonal, so let's say here's a diagonal and here's a longer diagonal, but those diagonals bisect each other and that equals that. It doesn't mean that they're all four congruent. It just means that this line here cuts this line in half. Likewise, this line right here cuts this line in half. And the last um, characteristic theorem that uh, is a um, characteristic is that one pair of opposite sides are congruent and parallel. And so what that would look like is if I had a parallelogram, I would have one side. So either, here's one, two different parallelograms. I can either say this side is congruent to this side and that's parallel to that. Or I could say this side is parallel to this side and that's congruent to that. Okay, so just either or, but just one side has to, um, one pair of opposite sides. Um, so we learned that a quadrilateral, which, which is a four-sided shape, um, can be divided into three different, um, uh, three different parts. We've got parallelograms, trapezoids, and kites. Now we went over parallelograms, which included rhombuses, squares, and rectangles. And we're gonna reiterate what that just, review what we just said before. Um, and then today we're gonna to introduce both trapezoids and kites. So um, if we had a rectangle, okay, rectangles in addition to being parallelograms have a couple more characteristics. So a rectangle is a parallelogram, all right? In addition to it being a parallelogram, it does have four equal angles. So four equal angles. And all my angles are going to be 90 degrees, okay? Um, in addition to that, a um, rectangle uh, will have um, its diagonals are congruent. So whatever this length is here, that's the same length. So the diagonals are the same value. So number three would be the diagonals are congruent. So a rectangle has these characteristics. It is a parallelogram. Remember, a parallelogram has five characteristics. See from here, from there. Those five all apply. And what that means is it being a parallelogram, it has both pairs of opposite sides congruent and parallel. Um, it has diagonals that bisect each other. And actually that one is kind of cool because that if my diagonals are the same length and if my diagonals bisect each other, so let's say this length was 10, that would be five and that would be five. But also this is 10. So that would be five and that would be five. So that would make all of them five. Mm -hmm. So those are the three um, characteristics about a parallel, about a rectangle. Um, then we covered a rhombus and we talked about a rhombus. Um, a rhombus again is a parallelogram, okay? Um, a rhombus, rhombuses are actually one of my favorites. Um, one of my favorite shapes. Um, the parallelogram, uh, a rhombus is a parallelogram. It also um, has four congruent sides, 
okay? Um, number three, so all the sides are congruent, okay? Uh, we already know both pairs of opposite sides are, are um, parallel and congruent, but we didn't know all four of them were equal. Um, a rhombus has diagonals um, that are perpendicular. So that is super cool. So my diagonals are going to be perpendicular and they're gonna form right, right angles. Um, we're gonna be using these a lot when we uh, do some right triangle trigonometry, um, but not today. Um, the diagonals also uh, bisect opposite angles. Okay, now the diagonals are not congruent. So obviously the diagonals are not congruent like a rectangle, but the diagonals do bisect its opposite angles. So if we already know that the opposite angles are congruent. So like, let's say this is 120 degrees and that's 120. My diagonals are gonna bisect those angles. So that would make both of these 60, okay? Likewise, whatever these are, if that was 120 here, this would have to be 60 up here which would then make that 30 and 30. And this also 30 and 30, okay? So it does bisect the um, opposite, both pairs of opposite angles. Um, and is that it? Let's see, we've got congruent sides, we've got diagonals that are perpendicular. Um, I think that's it. Okay, the next um, parallelogram that we're gonna talk about is a square. So a square is a parallelogram, Okay, uh, a, par a square is sort of all powerful. And um, I really like this square because let's just put you here. Okay, there's your head, there's your hair. Um, and you are super power uh, because a square has all the powers that a rhombus and a rectangle have um, combined. So let's start listing some of these. Um, number one, a square has four congruent sides. Okay, so we have four congruent sides. Okay, we have uh, four congruent angles, which are all 90 degrees. Uh, we have congruent diagonals, okay? And meaning the, this diagonal here is the same value as this diagonal here. Um, we have uh, congruent diagonals. Oh, the diagonals bisect uh, all the angles, the opposite angles. And in this case, if this was right, this is gonna bisect that and make, excuse me, take that 90 degrees and make them little individual 45s. So that would be 45, 45, all the way around. And in addition to that, um, let's see, congruent diagonals, diagonals bisect each opposite angle. Um, and my favorite is that the diagonals are um, perpendicular. Okay, so all of the qualities that a rectangle and a rhombus have, a square has. So basically a square can be a rhombus, a square can be a rectangle, but a rectangle cannot be a square, and a rectangle cannot be a rhomb, or excuse me, and a rhombus cannot be a square. Um, so new features, we have a trapezoid. Um, trapezoids have really one very cool thing, and that is, um, well, it's definitely not a parallelogram, but a trapezoid has one pair um, of parallel, sides, one pair of parallel, one opposite pair of parallel sides. So we have one opposite pair of parallel sides. And so what that means is, let's say this is my trapezoid. Um, make another trapezoid, okay? All right, um, so we have a couple of trapezoids here. We have one pair of parallel sides that are opposite, that's parallel that's parallel to that side. Um, I could do something like this and make it that way. Um, again, that's 
parallel to that. We have one pair of opposite sides that are parallel. Um, para, uh, trapezoids do have, however, um, something called a median. So our median that comes through and connects both midpoints, this is congruent to this, that is congruent to that. They are not congruent to each other. Um, in that, we call that an M, let's say. This is base one, this is base two. Um, the median, okay, is equal to uh, base one plus base two divided by two. Okay, it's the average of the bases. Um, then the other thing I wanted to talk to you about for trapezoids is we do have something called an isosceles trapezoid. And an isosceles trapezoid will have um, opposite sides here and here congruent. Um, if that's the case, then my base angles here and here will be congruent and my base angles up on top will be congruent with that, each other, but not each together. If it is isosceles, then also my diagonals will be congruent, okay? But definitely my diagonals are not bisected, okay? Um, all right, and then we have a kite. Now, a kite has a few qualities. Um, number one, the qualities of the kite are that the diagonals are perpendicular. So that means that, let's draw a kite. If I have a kite, my diagonals that do this and this, okay, are perpendicular. So that means that they form right angles there. Um, okay, a couple of things. This diag this length right here, this diagonal does not, does not cut, is not bisected, it's not cut in half. However, the whole value of that angle is equal to the whole value of that. Okay, so it has one pair of opposite angles that are congruent, and it's the part that is right there. Um, your diagonal will bisect these two angles here and here, um, but not the side ones. Um, another thing about a kite, another um, characteristic about a kite is that these two sides up are here are congruent, and these two sides down here are also congruent. Um, let's see if I missed anything. Um, oops. Uh, so for this right here, again, you have, um, okay, you have sides that are congruent, congruent. You have um, this angle here is congruent to this angle here. And you have your right angle that is um, because of the diagonals being uh, perpendicular. Um, we have one more theorem that deals with um, special uh, quadrilateral, or one more theorem relating to special types of quadrilaterals, um, but not necessarily and definitely not a quadrilateral. Um, it says the midpoint of the hypotenuse, which is right here, this being my hypotenuse, it says the midpoint of my hypotenuse um, is equidistant from the three vertices. So that means that from here to here, that's congruent, from here to here, that's congruent, and from here to here, that's congruent. See all three of my vertices? Um, something kind of really cool about this is that these, definitely these triangles are not congruent. However, they do become isosceles triangles in that my base angles are now congruent. So for this triangle here, this angle here, would equal this angle here. So let's just say this is 40 degrees. That and then this is 50, okay? Making a 90 degree right angle. Well, if that's 40, that would make this 40. And 40 and 40 is 80, and that would make this 100. Um this being a line, this would make this 80. Um this is 50. Base angles are congruent. That's going to be 50. So that does work. That's pretty cool, I think. So um, recapping, um, a couple of things about special parallelograms. A rectangle is a quadrilateral with four right angles. Um, a rhombus is a quadrilateral with four congruent sides. A square is a quadrilateral with four right angles 
and four congruent sides. Therefore, every square is a rectangle, a rhombus, and of course, a parallelogram. Um, here's some characteristics of all of the shapes that we just talked about. And I would go through and try to plug in as much of this as you can drawing in your picture. Um, and uh, I see there's nothing for a trapezoid. So let's just say um, on here, one pair of opposite sides are parallel. Um, so I would fill in this and then of course, check your answer. Um, you can pause the video, check your answer. Um, trapezoids have one pair of parallel sides parallel. Um, in addition to that, um, you do have a median that does connect the two midpoints. Um, and these properties, you know, uh, definitely a trapezoid is not a parallelogram, um, but it is a quadrilateral and it does have special characteristics for that. Um, diagonals of a rectangle are congruent. Um, so that's true. The diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. So each diagonal of a rhombus bisects two angles of the rhombus, that's true. If one angle of a parallelogram is a right angle, so here's my parallelogram, and if one angle is a right angle, then the parallelogram is at least a rectangle. And the reason for that is if it is a parallelogram, then we do know that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, which would then make this angle here 90 and this angle here 90, because they would be same side interior angles, um, and the same side interior angles um, add up to be 180. Um, this one, a lot of people forget this one. Um, if two consecutive sides of a parallelogram are congruent, meaning if this side is congruent to this side, or this side is congruent to this side, um, then that parallelogram is a rhombus. Um, four diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular bisectors. The diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular bisectors of each other, true. A rhombus is a square, negative. Um, a square is a rhombus, a square is a rectangle, the diagonals of a rectangle are perpendicular, incorrect. The diagonals of a rectangle um, are congruent, and that's it. They don't make a right angle here, no, and they don't bisect the angle here. Now, a lot of people are uh, make that mistake because they know that a square's angle, even you, the people say, oh, there's a square, and we squares angles in here, the diagonals bisect that into 45s, okay? But a lot of people will think that because it is a right angle that these become 45 and 45 and that's not accurate. Um, the quadrilateral with one pair of opposite sides parallel and one pair of opposite sides congruent is a parallelogram. Um, you would need to know distinctly that the one pair of opposite sides are parallel would have to be the same pair um, of opposite sides that are congruent. Okay, you'd have to make that distinction. Um, if that's the case, it would be true. If it said, you know, there, these are congruent and those are congruent, or these are parallel and those are congruent, then it would not be one. The diagonals of a rhombus are congruent. Um, absolutely not. Uh, let's say a rhombus looks like well, let's say that our rhombus looks like this. This diagonal here is a lot longer than this diagonal here. So that's false. Diagonals of a rhombus are not congruent. The diagonals of a rectangle are congruent and the diagonals of a square are congruent. And lastly, the diagonals of a rectangle are congruent. That's true. Um, determine, uh, which types of quadrilaterals could be described. Um, only one pair of sides are parallel. Uh, one pair of sides parallel would be our trapezoid. Both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. Diagonals by Sussy. Diagonals are perpendicular, but not congruent. Um, we'll go with a rhombus or a kite. Um, a regular quadrilateral could be a parallelogram. All angles are congruent, at the very least is a rectangle. Uh, excuse me, 
All angles are congruent is at least a rectangle. Um, a regular quadrilateral has all angles and all sides congruent. So that would have to be a square. Um, both pairs of opposite angles are congruent and the diagonals bisect each other. Um, that would be a parallelogram because a parallelogram does not have diagonals congruent and perpendicular. Um, so this problem right here says given right triangle ABC where M is the midpoint of AC. So here's AC. We're going to draw an M that makes that congruent to that. Uh, given that BM, which is this length right here, which is congruent to those, um, is X plus 10. Okay. And AC, where's AC? Oh, this whole thing is AC, is 12X squared plus 4X minus 10. Solve for AM. Well, that's this one right here. So they want this length right here. Um, well, if this length is the entire length from here to here, half of that is this little length right here. So that's going to be half of that is 6x squared plus 2x minus 5. And that would mean that that equals that. So meaning x plus 10 is equal to 6x squared plus 2x minus 5. And again, you should notice that this is um, quadratic. So the first thing you need to do is set it equal to zero. So you have 6x squared. I'm going to subtract 1x. So now I get plus x. I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides. I get minus 15. And now I need a factor. Or, or I could use the quadratic formula, which you're welcome to use. Um, I'm going to try 2x and 3x. Um, for 15, I'm going to try 3 and 5. Let's see what happens negative 9 and negative, that's 9, 9x and negative 10x makes negative 1x. I don't want negative 1, I want positive 1. So what I'm going to do there is I'm probably going to switch my signs. So this will be a minus here and this will be a plus. Let's just make sure that works. Check the insides, check the outside. So we have negative 9x positive 10x, that makes 1x, that's what we want. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of this work right here. And now I'm going to split it up and set both sides equal to zero. 3x plus five is zero, 3x equals negative five, x is negative three fifths, excuse me, negative five thirds. Uh, 2x minus 3 equals 0, 2x equals 3, x equals 3 halves. Um, and then there's additional um, problems that you can continue and do. Um, there's If the diagonals of a parallelogram are congruent, then the parallelogram is a rectangle. Um, in addition, you've got the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular, prove that it's a parallelogram. Or if you do have a parallelogram, prove that the diagonals of a rhombus